Okay, so I just want to shift my attention to the bow section of the Corsair here. Now, uh, you can see the, the rear is setting up here. I'm getting these shapes here, but I'm going to let that dry because i got to do that in sections. So I want to uh, build up the, the tire. There's some rubber tires here. Now, uh, what I need to decide is, is these steel bars that the tires mount to, they only come to this line really here. But, I'm, but there's all this um, rubber work. And it looks like a rubber tire tread, but this is actually folded. It's actually folded rubber. And uh, it's probably really resilient because it's so thick and it's, it's sort of springy, right? And because it's folded up like that, it probably has really good um, impact resistance. And then there's some little bit on the sides here, really thin, tight sort of fold on both edges. And then, so this part here, what I'm gonna do is I take some five thou, just so you wanna, maybe if you wanna know the number, 909, I use a lot of the five thou. You get uh, three sheets. So I tend to use quite a bit of this too for shims and so on. So what I did was I took a piece which is about 10, 11 millimeters wide, which is close to this. And I marked uh, quarter inch increments all the way down the strip. I just cut a strip, right? And then I fold it like this, like an accordion, see? I take it like this, okay? And I fold it over. And then I fold it back the other way. And it folds quite easily. And I'm going to do that all the way along. So I get a nice piece. You can see how that is, right? Let's see the front of this here. And that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to test a piece too. I'm going to try with a razor saw just to cut a couple of lines. I'll pinch that off tight with a clamp because I'll let it spring out a little bit after when I mount it. But I'm going to clamp that and then make a couple of razor cuts and let it spring out a bit. And I think I'll achieve that look there. And then I'll do the same but more thin I have some even thinner material. It says it's five, but it seems thinner. So I'll probably do that for that. Um, what I need to decide is if I need to cut off this here, I probably will I'll cut that and then shave some of that down because that's not even there. The actual on the actual uh, ship, it, it only comes to there anyway. So, okay. Okay, so I had to cut away some of this, these, these bars, these steel rails where the tires mount to. The prototype actually looks exactly like this anyway. I just thought I could get away with running them up here because I was going to just cover this with, you know, this kind of idea. But 
it's better that I clear all that out of there and then just make one big curved plate and build all this rubber um, onto it and then just glue it on as one sort of component with this here, this part, and on the other side here as well. Because they actually, you can see the rails here. They actually end right here. You can see they end right here. And this piece worked out good, this idea, but I have to redo this because it needs to be longer. So the I, so I just mounted this on a, on a piece of 40 thou strip, scrap, and I glued the accordion cell just on the back there you can see. Like the idea, I think, is uh, good. It's just a matter of executing it. And I'm getting there. I think I want see that. So what I need to do is I need to make an, another one of these. Um, but two chunks of this. So two long sections. So, And then I'll glue them together on a, like, like about this long. And that way, when I go to mount it, like I'll have to take out some of this stem here as well, the top stem. You can see that you can actually cut. You can cut the evergreen plastic quite easily as well. That's what I like about it. So then this, so then I'll just make one plate piece like this, and then I'll wrap it around. See, like that. And that'll do it. I'll just cut it so it fits in there nice. Okay, so I just want to show you a little tip here. So how to weld or how you can weld a sheet together. Okay, so when I cut this wall or this, this side galley wall, we'll call it a galley. Um, I didn't cut it large enough. So you just take a strip, same, this is 30 thou. Make sure the edge is wet. It helps to, <clears throat> excuse me, just to rough, just to stroke a couple of times to put a bit of tooth on the side. So the solvent, and it just goes in and it welds nice and tight. And if you get a little bit of a mushroom on there, then that's good. And I lay it down, this is on parchment paper, and then just press down on it. Make sure it's tight and squeezed in nice. Piece of parchment paper like that. And then that's welded really nice, uh, just like this one. Okay, so now I can trim that off, trim that off, square it up, and just lightly sand this, and that, that'll go away. And even if it doesn't, who cares? There's weld, mar there's weld lines all over steel boats, right, that uh, we wouldn't otherwise model in. And when you do this, that's what you end up with anyway, okay? Okay, so I just want to show you this. I don't want to forget. So remember how I laminated on or attached two pieces here to, to bulk this wall out so I could get the shape. Uh, this is the inside, so I'm not too concerned. This is the port side here, port side. Now, I just want to clean the surface of this up. So this is what I do. So, so now that this is set for, I don't know, half an hour maybe or so, is I just grab a board, like a board like this, and I just lightly hold it, like just don't push down, but just lightly rub it and put like a little bit of pressure with your fingers and just move it around, move it around like so. And then you can see how nicely it comes out. Like this I'll take down a bit more, but look at this one. It's perfect, like you can't see the seam. Like there are two seams there, like they're, they disappear. Well, actually there'd be three. So it's perfect, right? It's like a brand new sheet of 30 thou plastic, right? That's been packed out, see? So okay, so I'll just show you the, uh, 
the galley side walls here now and just uh, uh, mention a couple of things. You know, uh, there's something about scratch building, like um, sometimes like you'll leave, right? And then you'll come back to it and you'll say, okay, so where, where do I go? And then you got to sort of go over photos and whatever notes you have and look over your, your draft, whatever. But, you know, I find sometimes, at least for me, like uh, to get back into it, like I usually need to um, set like blocks of hours. Like I usually like to set a four hour block, you know, then I can get a lot done because it takes a bit to get into it. Like I noticed with myself, sometimes I got to force my hand. Like I didn't, wasn't really looking forward to doing these because of these portholes and stuff, you know, I just thought, ah, I'll kick it down the road a ways and do something else. I thought, no, I'm going to do it. And now that I've gotten into it, you know, after two hours, I'm, I'm, I'm almost completed them, you know, um, you can see where I added the strip here, there, and up here. I haven't even sanded this yet, but you can see, you can hardly even notice. And I had to cut a little bit of an angle here, like this, I'll exaggerate, like that, so that it fits up against this bulkhead, see? There's a little bit of an angle there. There isn't a straight line on ships, you know. <laughs> so that's, you know, that's one of the challenges as well. You're always dealing with, you know, curves and, uh, oblique angles and stuff but anyway I'm pretty happy that I got these to size and I felt that the portholes were a little bit too far over so I was able to pack it out a bit and I'm really happy with this dimensional size now um, so those are going like that <clears throat> excuse me and then you can see the top platform here where the rear deck is where the the uh, there's a bit of other stuff that goes on here and then the actual stacks you know, they kind of sit in here somewhere, but I'll figure that out. But yeah, so, you know, just getting back into it, forcing your hand a bit, and then it starts to snowball and you get into a zone. And that's the way it is, I think, with everybody, right? So don't be discouraged if you don't feel like it or things aren't going your way or if you make mistakes. It's just part of the game, really. And if you just persevere and learn from the mistakes, learn other things you can do, and, uh, you know, especially with plastic and solvent, like anything is possible, like, like any shape. And, uh, even, and even if you have to use epoxy putty, like milliput, the white milliput, which would blend in with this beautifully for things like this, well, you can do that too, or for other parts. But this is all evergreen so far, like there's no putty here, right? So you can see what can be achieved um, if you really plan things through and make paper templates cut out paper templates and and because it's the same principle right paper people build beautiful models out of paper i've seen them so it's the same principle except with plastic you can weld and it's much cleaner and you get a good solid model okay okay i just want to mention this too there's so many things i don't want to let slip through so I want to put a nice curved corner on this. Like there's going to be a return on this wall that goes to the center of the ship like that. Now you can glue that wall up like that if you want and then just sand a, a, a round corner. But I'd rather do a nice cleaner look because there isn't a lot of corners on this ship uh, like this. So I'm going to use this quarter round here, number 247. And I do this a lot of times when I want a nice uniform corner that's going to show and this one will and I'm just going to glue that on like a piece just a little bit longer than the wall so I can nibble it off flush later just on like that and it just cleans it up really nice and then I'll just add the wall on the other side of that it just makes it for a beautiful rounded steel fabricated corner okay yeah so these are done so you can see how they just drop in and you can always tell when your parts are, are laid up nice and cut well when they stand up on their own you know like that you know you that your edges and everything are square and and they're up against the surfaces as you would like them but it's not always like that <laughs> Um, I just want to talk a little bit here about process in terms of, you know, the procedures or tasks on a model as you're moving forward, um, you know, when to do certain things. Well, you know, I, I'm sorry to tell you, I don't know. 
uh, that's going to be different for every builder and every model. Every model is different. Every builder is different. And you could train builders or, I mean, there isn't really, there's architectural modeling courses, things like that. But I think the best way to learn, at least in my experience, is to just do it. Just do it. Just, just start building simple things. Build a box, build a square, uh, cut some curve. You know, it's just all just um, learn as you go. Like you can't just read a book and watch a video and then know how to do it. You actually, actually learn way more. Videos help if you're in practice, but you have to practice and just do stuff. And uh, you're going to have rejects and parts and excess scrap that uh, lines are the wrong angle or, you know, whatever. That's just part of it, right? Like, um, for example, like I have work I have yet to do here, but like, for example, I, I, I had this taped off. I just finished this area, this transom, just this curved fairing part. I have to put another plate. So what I'll do to get that curve is I'll just do a pencil rub. I've, I've shown that before, you know, where you lay a piece of paper on and, and you rub Okay, so I just picked up a perfect trace of this line. So I'll cut this out and then I'll lay it on a piece of plastic and I'll have the, this line matched up. And then I'll just draw in here. It's a narrow strip that goes around like this. And I'll cut it out and I'll lay it in. I'll weld it in. And that'll complete that, see? And I'll leave this a bit wide and then trim it up later to match those bullard plates, see? Now I cut this out of paper and then I lay it on the plastic with a few pieces of tape and I just trace it with a pencil and cut it out with a knife and touch it up with a sanding stick. So there's a lot of that. This, like, I use this method quite a bit when I build. But when I'm gonna do that part, uh, not yet. I want to get some work going here because I want to get this base plate for the cab so that I can establish where some of these other bollards go. Just because I'm building from photos, like you can't just go straight to the model. You got to feel things out, right? Like when you have photos of all these different angles, like I'm working out this, like how much space is this opening right here? I don't know. Like you come up these stairs here, you can walk along the top deck here to the front. There has to be a minimum there. I don't know what the minimum requirements are. Like, like I say, I'm not a nautical engineer, but I have to guesstimate things in ratio so that you get a good, you know, a representation of the model with the tolerances built in to a degree. I mean, it's 187 scale, right? So there's stairs behind there, see? One, two, three, probably four going up to this next level. So I got to think about that. I know how high these railings are. I've already established that. So you can see this railing is exactly as high as this paint line here, where the next level is. So if this deck level or, or cab level is, like that's the floor inside the cab. Well, if the railing's 42 inches, I, I know roughly that this is 42 inches off this deck. And that's good enough for me, see? So this piece here, which I drafted on and I scribed already, okay, uh, there isn't a straight line on this cab, by the way. So there's, there's, there's angles. I don't know these angles, but I just eyeball them. Okay, I'm just gonna eyeball them in. Okay, I keep pieces like this because I might reuse this near the top, but it might be a smaller circumference. So I'm gonna lay this on like this, okay? And then I can build my walls off of this, this plate like off the edge up, okay? It gives me a nice guide. So I pretty much am happy with this draft. And you know, there's a little bit of a, like here's another example, it's a little bit of a taper on the front here because if I made it square, it gets a bit tight in here. And I noticed on the photo, 
you know, there's a, a generous amount of space by this scupper right here. See there and there. Uh, I have other photos that show, like here's one here. You can see there's, you know, there's a fair walkway space in there. And I can see that this cab here is on a bit of an angle, like it's not square. I can see that from all my photos. So there, there isn't a square line really on the, sh on the whole ship, really. I mean, there's a few, but, you know, uh, generally a, 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 a nautical architecture, I think, is, is very heavy on the curves, right? <laughs> Which is why they're so beautiful to look at. So that's what I'm going to do. And that, like when I'm happy with that plate, so I'll probably have to cut another one of these because there's a floor above this. But it's going to be a little bit smaller in dimension if the sides of the cab are not square. Like I'll exaggerate, like the cab, like it goes in a bit like that, see? So if I go up another half inch, it's going to be just a little bit smaller profile than this. Similar, but a bit smaller. So what I'll do is I'll... I'll build it roughly the same size and then sand it or just eyeball it in, right? I'll use paper again if I have to, just to try to get it close, okay? Okay, so how's everybody doing? So this is probably a good time to talk about the... Um, journey so far on this model I'm, I'm i'm getting to a point where about halfway with the primary structure well probably a little bit more even because now i'm up starting to lay up the cabin floor here and then i have the stacks already drafted and scribed so just need to pop those apart and assemble them um so so far um, i'm quite happy with the way it's gone um you can see there's the plywood waterline base 3 8 embedded in the model now and it's all plastic see so everything gets welded now apart from like i'll probably use some brass on the masts and stuff and railings but you know 99 percent plastic pretty much you can see the rear galley that's framed in uh, i drafted right on top of the deck here for the floor plan which i drafted from you know as many photographs as i can get like it's not going to be perfect to the prototype because I don't have an official plan but it's pretty close so like here's a photo I pulled off the google images well I have quite a few other photos as well and like I just grabbed as many as I could and you can see the proportions are pretty close so I'm pretty happy with the direction that it's going so and then the one sort of main builder's draft that I sort of sketched up I drew up was this which kind of guides some of my ratio and proportions on the model this is the actual f f size to the model um, so yeah so uh, some of the challenges really on this uh, I would say is this rear transom area wrapping this you know with uh, I believe this was 15 thou but the beauty of evergreen plastic, and I just want to point this out, is like I had to slice, put a slice here. And I think there was a gouge right here. And I just put on a generous amount of solvent and pushed a piece of 15 thou right into it so it mushroomed the glue out the edges. And then let it uh, cure overnight. And when I sanded it, it just disappeared. So you can heal any wound with, uh, you know, evergreen plastic and any any solvent weld, not just this material, but you know, whatever your choice is. I'm just familiar with this and has a lower odor. That's why I use it. Uh, and these bowlers were a bit of a challenge and getting the angles, you know, to taper in like this. Um, I'm going to, I still have to cut a plate now to go across here. And then of course there's the winch in here and then the stacks, the manifold, the exhaust manifolds, the deck and the, and the cab up front. And then I didn't attach the tires yet. Uh, they're, oh, sorry. So I said 99.5. So metal. It's going to be white metal tires I got from Showcase Miniatures. HO scale truck tires. They're really cool. So I'm going to put those on. I'll pin them on with brass. And then I'm going to um, attach the tire chunks, you know, that I fabricated. I'm going to put those on near the end because I didn't want to mangle them because I'm handling it all the time. So you have to kind of think of that too. Like what parts... 
are going to be exposed to catching on things like these bollards I probably could have waited but they're pretty solid like they're drilled right into the plywood and then they're also glued to the plate which is glued to the rail here so they're you know they're pretty solid as well so so far so good I'm really liking the lines of it. it's a beautiful tug my goodness uh, it has beautiful lines doesn't it um, okay so let's carry on then uh, I'm gonna uh, look into doing this the stacks here now trying to get those you want to make sure that I get them like not too far back or too far forward so I think I'm I have a pretty good idea where they're going to lay in here and then the winch will be fun to build and then the cabin is a is another little bit of a challenge because there isn't a straight line on the ship you know <laughs> um, the side sort of angle I'll exaggerate you know they kind of angle in like this and then the front has a bit of a forward rake to it you can see it there probably not that severe but I just draw drew it like that but I'm going to minimize that a little bit after re-looking at the photos and then it's rounded on the front there's this part of it it's sort of a slight curve which you can see here and then of course there's the de deck details up here and then a few more bollard uh, fixtures there and then uh, there's a winch chain winch it looks like it's a contained winch I couldn't find very good photos of it but it pulls the chain up inside a big drum and goes down into the the front of the bow here probably into an anchor locker so and then the scuppers too that I cut those in with they're pretty basic just drill two holes like draw a rectangle drill two holes and then just cut join the two lines cut them very carefully and they came out good so yeah so moving right along and uh, having a lot of fun with this build the 187 scale c-span Corsair for the barge slip scene you know okay